The Last Witch, the story of Marjorie Talbot. The history of witches is a dark and sad story, full of fear and misunderstanding. For hundreds of years, people believed that certain women had strange powers and were dangerous. They thought these women, called witches, could harm others, curse them, or even work with the devil. This is the story of a woman I knew long ago. Her name was Marjorie Talbot, and her life changed because of fear and suspicion. Marjorie lived in a small village deep in the English countryside during the 16th century. It was a time when life was difficult for everyone. People worked hard in their fields, tending crops and animals. They wore simple clothes, woolen dresses and coats, because winters were cold and food was often scarce. The village was surrounded by thick forests, which were both beautiful and mysterious. People did not understand everything about nature, and they were often afraid of things they couldn't explain, like sudden storms or illnesses. The villagers believed deeply in God, and they went to church every Sunday. But they also believed in old stories about magic and spirits. If someone got sick, or if their crops failed, they sometimes thought it was because of dark forces. They needed someone to blame when bad things happened. And unfortunately, this is when people started to suspect witches. Marjorie Talbot was different from the other villagers, and that is why they feared her. She lived alone in a small cottage on the edge of the village, near the woods. Her cottage was made of stone, with a thatched roof, and it was surrounded by a garden full of herbs and flowers. She was known as a healer. People would come to her secretly when they were sick or needed help with a difficult birth, and Marjorie would give them herbal remedies, potions, or teas made from plants she grew herself. Her knowledge of plants had been passed down from her mother and grandmother, but many villagers thought her abilities were unnatural. Marjorie wasn't young, but she wasn't old either. Her dark hair, streaked with gray, was always tied back, and her green eyes were sharp, as if they could see things others couldn't. She was quiet and preferred to keep to herself. She didn't talk much with the other women or join in village celebrations. This made her seem mysterious. People thought she had strange powers because she lived alone and didn't need anyone's help. Life at that time was hard and full of uncertainty. If a storm came and destroyed crops, or if illness spread through the village, people didn't know what caused it. They didn't have doctors or science to explain things. Instead, they often blamed witches. Marjorie became the perfect target for their fear. It all began one cold autumn when a young boy in the village fell ill with a fever. His mother, Beatrice, was heartbroken because she had already lost other children to illness. She was desperate for someone to blame, and she remembered seeing Marjorie walking near her house a few days earlier. Beatrice began to tell others that Marjorie had cursed her son. Soon, more people began to remember strange things they thought they had seen. Some said they saw Marjorie talking to animals or walking through the forest during storms. Others claimed that she could control the weather or make bad things happen just by looking at them. In those days, it didn't take much for someone to be accused of witchcraft. The village magistrate, a man named Walter Greaves, decided to take action. He was a stern and religious man, always looking for signs of evil. He called a meeting of the village elders and demanded that Marjorie stand trial for witchcraft. The trial took place in the village square. I was there, watching as Marjorie was brought Odard out of her cottage, her hands tied with rough rope. She looked tired but calm, 
her face pale in the early morning light. The villagers gathered around, whispering and staring at her, as if they didn't know her anymore. Some of them had once come to her for help, but now they were afraid to defend her. Fear had changed everything. Walter Greaves stood before the crowd, accusing Marjorie of terrible things. He said she had cursed the boy, poisoned the village wells, and made a pact with the devil. The crowd gasped in shock. Marjorie said very little in her defense. She knew the truth, but no one was willing to listen. They searched her body for a witch's mark, a sign that she was in league with dark forces. When they found nothing, they simply made their accusations louder. The decision was quick. The magistrate declared Marjorie guilty, and she was sentenced to death. She would be burned at the stake, a terrible punishment that was meant to cleanse the village of her so-called evil. The night before her execution, the villagers prepared the pyre in the middle of the square. It was a cold night, the sky filled with dark clouds, and the air smelled of wood and oil. There was a heavy silence over the village, and even the wind seemed to hold its breath. People didn't talk much that evening. They were afraid of what would happen the next day, but also felt a strange excitement. The next morning, the entire village gathered. Marjorie was brought to the pyre, her hands still bound. The flames were ready to be lit, and the crowd stood in a tense silence. I remember how she looked in that moment. Her green eyes, once so bright, seemed distant, as if she had accepted her fate. She didn't cry or scream. She simply stood there, tall and calm. Walter Greaves gave the order, and the fire was lit. At first the flames were small, but soon they roared higher, consuming the wood around her. Marjorie stood still, her face peaceful, even as the fire rose. The villagers watched, some praying, others staring in horror. It was over quickly, the flames turned to ash, and Marjorie was gone. Her death didn't stop the fear. Over the next few years, many more women, innocent like Marjorie, were accused of witchcraft, tortured and killed, not only in England, but across Europe and even in the American colonies. The famous Salem witch trials in Massachusetts, where many more innocent people were executed, happened nearly 100 years later. Looking back now, it's hard to believe that so many lives were lost to fear and superstition. Marjorie was no witch, she was just a healer, a woman who understood the plants and the land. But in those dark times when life was hard and people didn't understand the world around them, anyone different became a target. Her story, like so many others, is a reminder of how dangerous fear can be. When people are afraid, they often turn against those who are different, and in their fear, they forget their humanity. Marjorie Talbot's life was taken because of that fear, and her memory stands as a warning to all of us, even today. Continue boosting your reading and listening skills, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.